In this video tutorial, we'll be looking at the nomenclature for polyatomic ions, also known as compound ions, so both words are interchangeably used. If you look at the common valence sheet, uh, part 1 and 2 of our video clips have been dealing with the monovalent and uh, multivalent elements at the top portion. This video will be dealing with the compound ions at the bottom portion over here. So, what are polyatomic ions? They are groups of atoms that are electrically charged due to the loss or gain of electrons. As seen on the common valence sheet, <clears throat> you will find they come in groups of two or more different types of elements. So, for instance, the bromate ion contains a bromine and three oxygens, all bonded together in one large compound, and together they have a one minus charge. Or down here, if you look at the acetate ion, it's basically uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen all bonded together, and together they uh, have a one minus total charge. The most common polyatomic ions that you'll be dealing with in this course are the seven primary ones. They are the ones that contain oxygen atoms and are located on your sheet over here in the center. However, we will be dealing with these miscellaneous compound ions. I have bolded the most common ones, so these are the ones that you should definitely know. Uh, the ones that have not been bolded, they are, or rather they will potentially be used in this course, but not as often as, say, the ones that are bolded, and definitely not as often as the seven primary compound ions. When naming these polyatomic ions, they generally follow this pattern. Element, eliminate, where this element over here, again, is the metal, and it does not change its name. Eliminate, though, uh, by looking at the compound ion names, you'll notice that all of them end with A-T-E, bromate, iodate, nitrate, chlorate, sulfate, carbonate, phosphate. As soon as you see an A-T-E, you know you should look down here in the compound ion section, not up here. If you uh, saw an IDE, so a phosphide, then yes, it'd be the phosphor, three minus, up here, IDE. But if you see a phosphate, you need to look down here, PO4, two different things. Please make sure you don't make that mistake. Phosphide, IDE, phosphate, ATE, two different compounds. Now, it won't always end with an ATE. Uh, if you look at the, some of the compound ions, some of them end with the IUM. So ammonium, for instance. Uh, acetate is fine. Bicarbonate is fine. Chromate, dichromate. Hydroxide is another one you would see uh, very often. So IDE. But you just have to remember that hydroxide is a compound ion. It's one of the miscellaneous ones. But in general, most of them do end with an ATE. And as soon as you see an ATE, make sure you remember that it is a compound ion and not a single element. Now because metals are generally positively charged whereas the uh, compound ions tend to be negatively charged as you can see over here negative, negative, most of these are negative except for ammonium that's the only exception over here. As such they're able to follow the zero-sum rule as well where this uh, all the positives must add up to all the negatives to sum into zero. Now let's take a look at writing the chemical formulas for these uh, polyatomic uh, ions. So the first step is to write out the symbols. So here we go, we have silver. So I write down the symbol for silver, AG. And I see this nitrate. As soon as I see nitrate with an A-T-E suffix, I know that I need to look down here on my valence sheet, not up here. Because this area ends with an I-D-E. So if it had been up here, it would have been called nitride. But it wasn't nitride, it was a nitrate. And as you can see, nitrate's right here. Symbol is NO3, one minus charge. Everything is spelled exactly the same, nitrate, not the nitride, which would have been up here. So I write down the NO3, nitrate. I put brackets around the nitrate to remind myself that this is a polyatomic ion, that it is a group package and that these atoms tend to stick together for a total of a one minus charge altogether. So there's the first step, write out the symbols. Next step, identify the valence charges. We've identified nitrate, it's a one minus charge because we looked on the valence sheet. Silver has a one plus charge, if you want to double check it. We see that silver does indeed have a one plus charge. Final step, insert subscripts if necessary to follow the zero sum rule. 
So according to the zero sum rule, the valence charges, the total valence charges on each side, all the positive and all the negatives, must add up to zero. So I have one plus, I have one negative, and it indeed does add up to zero. So this is a stable compound, check. Let me erase all this rough work, and that would be my final answer. Let's take a look at the next example. Here we have copper one sulfate. So first step, write out the symbols. Copper is Cu. Sulfate, as soon as I see the ATE symbol, I know that it's a polyatomic ion. Again, we look down here, not up here. So sulfate, I see sulfate is over here. SO4 is its symbol and it has an overall charge of 2 minus. So I put brackets around here, SO4, and I know that there's a 2 minus charge overall. The brackets are to remind myself that this is a package deal. These atoms combine together to have an overall charge of 2 negative. So there's the first step. Second step, identify the valence charges. We've already done that for sulfate, but now we need to do the same for copper. If you'll remember, copper is a multivalent element, so it has multiple charges, 1 plus and 2 plus. So I write at the top, 1 plus and 2 plus. Now we need to figure out which one is it. Is it 1 plus or is it 2 plus? In this case, it is a 1 plus because it says copper 1. It actually tells you which copper is involved. So we know it's a copper 1 sulfate, not a copper 2 sulfate. So let's double check there. Valence charge is checked off. Next step, insert subscripts if necessary to follow the zero sum rule. Right now I have a one positive and two negative. If I add them up, they do not sum into zero. So I need to add more of the positives in order to neutralize the two negative. So what I need is I need two coppers altogether. So I have one plus there. If I have two coppers, now I have two positives. Two positives, two negative it does add up to zero now. And the zero sum rule is fulfilled and this compound is stable. Car uh, copper Cu2SO4. So let me just erase all the rough work and there we have it. Our final answer is Cu2SO4. A common mistake many students will make is they'll write down copper then they'll write down the sulfate SO4. They'll see the one and they'll think oh one done. But that is incorrect. This one refers to the valence charge, not the subscript underneath. You still need to do your zero sum rule to make sure that the charges all add up to zero in the end. All right, so let's move on to the last uh, example. Magnesium hydroxide. So first step, write out the symbols. Symbol for magnesium is an Mg. Now I see this hydroxide. This can be confusing because there's an IDE, so there's no indicator that's a polyatomic. You just have to know, uh, you have to memorize that the hydroxide is polyatomic. So as you can see, hydroxide is one of the miscellaneous uh, compound ions. Hydroxide spelled exactly the same, hydroxide, with an OH as its symbol and a 1 minus valence charge. Uh, if it was the hydrogen up here in the, instead, it would have been called hydride. Hydride, I-D-E. And that is the hydrogen version of just H by itself. But when you see hydroxide, then you know that it has got to be the OH over here. Hydride, then it's just a regular H. Confusing, I know, uh, but there's no other way around it, unfortunately. So back here, I write down hydroxide. The symbol was an OH. Again, I'm going to put in the brackets to remind myself that it is a compound ion, and together they have a 1 minus charge. So there's step two. Step three, insert subscripts if necessary to follow the zero sum rule. Magnesium has a two plus charge. If we consult the monovalent or the common valence sheet, you'll see that magnesium has a two plus charge. Therefore, it's verified. And now we need to set up the zero sum rule. So here I have a two positive charge and I have a one negative charge. If I add them up, it does not add up to zero. So that means I need more of the hydroxides. So I'm going to put a 2 outside here to show that I need 2 of these hydroxide ions, each having a 1 minus charge. Now I've got 2 hydroxide ions, 1 minus each, 2 minus altogether, 2 positive. It does now add up to 0. 
And because it follows a zero-sum rule, this compound is stable. Let me erase all the rough work. And there we have it. Our final answer is Mg brackets OH2. Now it is very important that you keep the brackets here. Otherwise, if you wrote this down, MgOH2, this would be incorrect. This is telling me that there's only two hydrogens and that's it. There's only one oxygen. In this case over here, you're telling me that I have two hydroxide ions and that is correct. So this is the number one mistake most students will make. Uh, please make sure that you do put brackets around, oops, I'm going to put it around the way, around the hydroxide, the polyatomic ion, to show that I have two of these groups and not just two of the hydrogens. Now let's go the other way around. Uh, we are given the chemical formula and we need to write out the chemical name. So first up, just write out the names. So BA stands for barium. So I write down barium. However, here, you'll notice that there's a bracket and that tells me that it's polyatomic ion. Another hint that it is a polyatomic ion is because, well, there's more than one atom involved. And if it was just one atom, then you would look up here in the common valence sheet. But because there's multiple ions, you know that it's going to be down here in the compound ion section. So what we're looking for is CH3COO, CH3COO. You'll find that it's not here in the seven primaries, but instead it's down here. CH3COO. And the name of this ion is acetate, and it has a one minus charge. So going back here, I just write acetate. Copy the name exactly as it is, acetate. And I know there's a one minus charge. Barium has a two plus charge usually. And we can confirm that by looking at the common valence sheet. And so looking at this, we have a two plus charge and a one minus charge. But because we have two of these acetate ions, each worth one minus, it does add up to the zero sum rule. So everything's fantastic. Let me erase the rough work. And there we have our final answer, barium acetate. Now a common question among students is why don't we put a number sign here? Why don't we say barium 2? Sorry, I should be using Roman numerals. Why don't they say barium 2 acetate because barium is a 2 plus charge? Well that's because barium only has one possibility. It is monovalent. So if there's only one possibility, there's no point, no need for you to identify what is its charge. Over here, if it was some other element where it had multiple choices, then yes, at that point you would have to write a number in here to identify which valence charge it is. But since barium only has one possibility, you don't need this uh, Roman numeral here. It is not necessary. All right, so moving along. PbNO32. So I know, uh, first step, write down names. Pb is lead. So I write down lead. Next step, NO3. As soon as I see the NO3, multiple atoms, I know it's polyatomic. And if I look for the NO3 under the polyatomic section, I find that it is the nitrate ion. And nitrate has a one minus charge. So I'll copy exactly, nitrate, and I'm good to go. Now, nitrate has a one minus charge, lead on the other hand, has multiple possibilities because it's a multivalent compound. So it could be 2 plus or it could be 4 plus. So I'm going to write a 2 plus slash 4 plus. And because it has multiple options, I do need to put Roman numerals in this case. So up here, there was no need because it was just one option. But down here, because there's multiple options, I need to tell you or tell whoever's reading it which lead is it. Is it lead 2 or is it lead 4? So taking a look at this, I got one negative over here. But because I have two of these compound ions, that means I have two of these negative charges. And so the only way I can do this, if I have only one lead, is, well, has to be two plus. Because if it was a four plus lead, it would not add up to zero. Two plus, though, does add up to zero. And that follows the zero sum rule. So it's definitely not lead four, it is lead two. So I write down lead to nitrate to show that it is the lead 2 species, not the lead 4 species of lead, uh, the lead nitrate. So if I erase the rough one, I have my final answer, lead 2 nitrate. Alright, so what I want you to do is uh, pause the video and try this uh, question yourself. I'll give you the answer in about two seconds. 
And so the answer is iron 3 sulfate. Because over here I've got three of the sulfate ions. Sulfate ions each have a 2 minus charge, 2 minus, 2 minus, 2 minus, three of them, as stated over here. And iron, it could be a 2 plus or a 3 plus. So because there's two of them, it has to be the iron 3 in order to add up to 0. If it was a 2 plus, it would not finish it up. It would not uh, follow the zero sum rule. So definitely not iron 2. Instead, it is iron 3 sulfate.